Good morning everybody and welcome to today's assembly. Today's assembly is going to be all about rules. Can you think of a rule? We have rules in reception class that we call them our golden rules. We have rules as part of Little Court. We have rules as part of Ripley Court School. Now have a think for me now. If you were head teacher for the day, which rules would you keep? And which new rules would you enforce on the school? I'd like to hear your options throughout the week. Now, it's not just children who have rules. Adults have rules as well. In our wider community, we can't go around doing anything we want. What do you think would happen in a world that had no rules? Do you think it would be a happier place or a sad place? I'm going to come back to that question after our story. This is a book called, But Why Can't I? It's a book all about rules. Jenny came to look after George and his sister Rosie. Mum told them the rules. They had to go to bed at seven o'clock. They had to listen to Jenny. They had to keep to the rules. But George said, rules were silly. Jenny took them to the park. They had to cross the road. Jenny said there were rules for crossing the road. They had to stop, look and listen. But then George didn't stop or look or listen. He nearly ran into the road. Jenny said, rules keep people safe. Later on, Jenny got out of a game. She told them the rules. They had to take turns and throw a dice. But George didn't listen. He didn't take turns. No one could play. So Jenny had to put the game away. She said rules make playing the game fair. Then Jenny said it was seven o'clock. It was time for bed. But George didn't want to go to bed. He wanted to stay up late. But why can't I? He moaned. Jenny said he needed his sleep. She said people need sleep to keep fit and well. But George didn't listen. He stayed up late. He got tired and grumpy. Then Jenny told him that she had to keep rules too. She told him she worked in a shop. The shop had lots of customers. It was a great place to work. But she had to keep to the rules. She had to look smart for work. She had to get to work on time too. But one day Jenny was late for work. The customers could not get into the shop. Everyone was cross. Jenny nearly lost her job. She was never late again. George was really tired now. He yawned oh, and he yawned. George got under the blanket. He said rules weren't silly at all. Rules keep our school and our community fair. If I said, from here on in at Ripley Court School, year two, you're all head teachers. You can decide what the reception do, what time we go home. Would that be fair? I think year two might like it, but it wouldn't be fair because to enforce rules and to give rules to others you need to be thinking about what's best for people. So if Chef Ian decided, we don't need to have any healthy food on our menu, we can just have chips and burgers and ice cream, would that be fair to the children and the staff at this school? Because I don't think so. Now, because we're talking about rules, I've chosen two very sensible year two boys. 
The reason I've chosen these two boys is because I think they know how to behave and they know how to follow rules. And these two boys are going to have a very special job. The job is going to be getting out bags and putting bags away in the green little court shed. And in those bags are lots of toys to be played with on the playground. Now, as we're talking about rules, I'm going to explain the rules of these toys. You will only be allowed these toys if you look after them. That means we're not playing with them, not being silly, not breaking them, because you won't get any more. Another rule, you need to take turns and share. And the third rule is that you need to help the two boys tidy up the toys at the end of playtime. If you can prove to the teachers that you know how to follow these three rules, you'll get to keep the toys in your classroom, to be used, to be taken outside, to enjoy the summer sun. So, who are the very special helpers? Drum roll please. The first special helper is Harvey Knight. So well done Harvey, you're going to be one of our outdoor to outdoor toy monitors. And the second person is going to be Morgan Noble. So well done boys, you've been given a very special job. Now as we're on to giving things out, it is of course our star of the week assembly. And I was really looking for children who've been trying their best and listening to the rules and following. And I've got some goodies. So we've started with year two. We've started with reception. This week we're going to start with year one. So this person has been working hard in his maths. I hope we've all been working hard on our maths, but this person's been especially trying his best. And the star of the week goes to Alexander Weeks. Well done you. Very proud of you, Alexander. Okay, we're going to move down the corridor to reception. In reception, we've got another mathematician. We've got Omar Solomon for super effort in his mental maths. Give him a clap. Well done, Omar. You should be very proud of yourself. Now, to the year twos. There's not many Star of the Weeks left for year twos before they go on to year three. So are you ready, year two? This person has oh, been very clever. He's had amazing conjunction sentences. It goes to Mr. Bertie Cox. Well done, Bertie Cox. Amazing. I'd like to hear some of your sentences. That sounds fantastic. And the last one of this week is someone who's always trying their best, which I think is important because sometimes when you're just good all the time, you think, oh, I'm not being noticed, when in fact teachers are always noticing. And this person in particular always tries. And it goes to, drum roll, Anaya Cates Ward. Well done you, Anaya. You really do always try your best. So that's the end of the assembly. Remember those golden rules with the toys and you'll get to enjoy them more. That way it's all being fair. Have a lovely week. Bye, everybody. Bye, bye, bye.